Добрый день. Uh, good afternoon. Добрый день всем. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome to our session at this conference, which I believe is one of the main forms for our discussions uh, about the future of Russia and the world. It's a big honor for me to moderate this session dedicated to education, the area, uh, which is not directly related to, to my professional scope, although together with my wife we have been involved in social project, and it's a big honor for me to moderate this session with the two ministers, the Minister of Education of the Russian Federation and the Minister of Science and Higher Education. And this is um, a dialogue between two very important institutions which should interact daily. So this is a very deep and profound topic, and I am sure that 45 minutes are not enough to fully cover it, but I hope that at least uh, we can touch upon some aspects. So question number one is, what success means. Uh, so when I first heard about the topic social success, school and university, so let's think of what uh, success would be in the 21st century. Because before, in the days of the Soviet Union, and also in the West, we followed a very simple model. So first you would go, you would finish school, then you would take a loan, you would go to a higher school, then with a job, um, you would, uh, your career, your professional career would start at about uh, 28, and uh, knowledge uh, you obtained uh, would empower your future development. It was a very clear uh, model. Everyone could understand uh, uh, the future. It was uh, very clear and predictable. But now the world changed. So what is success when your learning should be lifelong, when you need to adapt to uh, the changes? Um, so and knowledge you get uh, it's not necessarily what you uh, need in future. So some people start their businesses before the university, or we have a lot of businessmen who um, succeed before graduation, before they get their MBA degree. So, and uh, university is no longer an institution uh, the way it used to be, like a guarantee of uh, a just development, a social mandate. And we see that uh, um, there is a shift towards bigger corporations like uh, Facebook, uh, Google, and Apple uh, that create corporate universities, their own education system. So education moves from the social sector to the business area. So we have a lot of issues to discuss. Uh, to have a common denominator, let's discuss what's success in the 21st century. So, uh, Sergey, Mr. Kravtsov, uh, what is uh, success for people um, who live in the 21st century? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's also a pleasure for me to attend uh, the Gaidar Forum, so this is a, a very good uh, forum and venue to discuss a number of questions uh, in different areas of economy, including education, and it was always important for us to cover the main trends at the beginning of the year. Uh, trends which uh, touch upon us directly. And as Ruben, you mentioned success and being successful. In my opinion, we need to put this question uh, like uh, what personal traits and qualities uh, a person will need in 10 or 20 years from now and how they will enable a person to develop, uh, to 
be happy and successful, how they will influence the successful development of our economy. And global challenges you mentioned, uh, so they mean that quality is very important uh, for success and uh, um, other qualities like uh, moral principles. Uh, so today's um, at the level of uh, OECD, it's been discussed that uh, being kind, being true to your word, the ability to um, get the best use of the opportunities you have, uh, being uh, environment friendly, being tolerant. So the, all these issues are now priorities on our agenda as never before. So it's important for the system of education at the level of the secondary education and uh, higher school, uh, as it's been mentioned. Uh, so it needs to shape our moral uh, qualities to preserve our world for the countries to develop and to make uh, people happy. Uh, along with their development. So, you, thank you. So, you mentioned the basic general values, but also the ability to integrate, the ability to adapt yourself to make uh, mistakes so are necessary. But many people like uh, uh, predictability. So, people, well, there is a minor proportion of people who tend to run a risk, uh, but we have um, uh, a high level of uh, concern in the society. But what can we do to teach our people uh, other than simple things like uh, 2 plus 2 means 4 uh, and who are the main classics in literature. Uh, so we need to teach our people how to experiment, to make a mistake and continue with the experiment. So the topic of uh, creativity, of combining uh, things which uh, were never combined before. So how can we convey uh, in our education? So Mr. Falkov, how can we change the paradigm in our behavioral model? Okay, uh, to continue on what uh, Mr. Kravtsov uh, said before, so uh, correctly shaping the picture of the world means half of the success and not just uh, uh, school or university uh, are responsible for that, but also the family. So the willpower uh, is determined uh, in an early age, uh, so a decent family education is a guarantee uh, for a successful person, a precondition. As for the social success, of course, I would never deny the role of the school is uh, highly important. But also for schools, as for universities, it's essential to shape the skill of a person who would be ready to create something new, to run a risk and uh, to make a progress. It's a very important uh, essential quality for the 21st century because school as such, I believe, well, it should uh, preserve uh, uh, the wish to learn, to preserve the motivation, not just offer uh, like some knowledge stock, but uh, keeping, retaining the motivation is essential. and. At higher schools, approaches should be uh, uh, as to enable uh, a person to create something new in government administration, in science, in art. And we have a demand for transforming everything, uh, the educational uh, pattern, uh, the curriculum, the disciplines, if we would expand on that, uh, creating um, a certain type of competencies. Because a human being in the 21st century, and it's essential to prepare a person to act uh, amid and certainty and create something new in principles. Because we need to prepare our graduates 
uh, just to be competitive in the labor market. We need to fine-tune them for uh, shaping the new types of activities uh, um, for them to start a business a research lab to create uh, jobs uh, uh, added value. And in my opinion, this is what makes uh, today's university different. And also, in higher school, you should also shape students and uh, uh, focus them in that uh, direction. You need to find like a real-life project. So, And this is a big challenge for the total system of education. If you um, would look at the success as we discussed. So this is just one of the element, of course. Uh, we should have only a narrow look on the success, but it's uh, uh, important in the 21st century. Okay, may I say uh, something who used to be successful in the older system, so I got a cum laude diploma, the golden medal, and it was clear for me, so you should be successful within the system. You need to uh, possess a certain scope of knowledge. But will the system uh, remain as it is now? Will we still have some exams to prove your knowledge uh, in certain disciplines uh, and prove your ability to express your thoughts in a clear way? And also, you should correspond to the system existing in the world, uh, uh, no matter if it's uh, a communist or capitalist system. We also see, like in the United States of America, uh, certain orientations for being an athlete or so on, or will change. Well, uh, Ruben, of course, we understand it quite well uh, as part of the Gaidar Forum. We discuss economic issue here, and uh, uh, economy changes. It used to be different uh, when we were kids at school, and today it's totally different. And of course, our education system uh, needs to respond to it, and maybe 15 or 20 years from now, uh, the economy is different again, and today we must be ready uh, for the economy we'll face in um, a dozen, dozen years uh, in, f in the future. And the system, of course, is changing. And a lot of things you mentioned already exist in our secondary education and vocational education systems. So you mentioned uh, the golden medal, but um, the first thing you can never ignore are basic knowledge, because the gold medal is about the knowledge uh, in certain subjects. So if a person uh, uh, can it read or write, so then it's possible for such a person to gain the competencies uh, relevant in today's world. Then number two, it's about attempts. It's not possible for a young person who graduated from school just to come to this uh, world uh, of adults. And at the moment, we are cre recreating the vocational education system which uh, used to exist in Soviet days. And in today's professional world, we have experience of successful people like you. So you went through a number of stages. You are a successful person. And in our country, you can achieve uh, great heights and resolve uh, certain tasks and goals. You need attempts, experiments, delving into a certain situation uh, where a young person will be able to uh, put himself on a trial. So a system of education, communication, communication with successful people, people who really achieved uh, uh, certain results. So life cases of such successful people who should motivate a young person for new achievements. Communication with peers, not only inside a class, at a school, but also with peers from different schools, from different regions, and social media and communication technologies uh, 
empower it now. So there's mechanisms which shape a new professional, young person uh, for the professional world. So these competences are already being shaped within the system of the school education. So, uh, Valerio, you went to Skolkova Business School. We founded together with uh, our colleagues. And we had a discussion that the uh, entrance uh, exam uh, shouldn't be just an exam for the knowledge of GMAT, but we said let's send all future businessmen, no matter if they uh, go to work for the government later on, let's uh, send them to two men, let's create a like, crisis, a critical situation to make uh, them uh, take decision amid uncertainty. So this is a different mechanism of uh, selection and different criteria for being successful. Not just criteria for realizing who is the best uh, at maths or English. So we need to transform our selection system and criteria which will enable us to focus on the skills we need, both in school and uh, in university. Yeah. Well, we still live uh, according to the traditional pattern, so where it's not possible to send a person to another region without money. Uh, it's even hard to imagine it uh, even in a movie. So my answer would be, so what's standard for the best business schools should be the common place for our universities and schools. And by this I mean, so as uh, Mr. Kraftsov correctly said, a young student at school or in a university uh, needs to have a chance to run a risk uh, in thoughts and actions. Have a look at uh, uh, classical education. So once you enter you have very little choice. Everything is predetermined for you. And you need a reasonable balance. So the younger a student is, so of course at elementary school you should normally have no choice. But a higher education student uh, should be responsible for a potential choice. He needs to understand that uh, um, he can make mistake, he can be wrong. So if we would go back to your example, so if you throw away a person who was raised under a dome in predetermined conditions, so once you uh, get a certain uh, amount of knowledge, so you pass an exam and you get an excellent mark. But when you don't understand if you, if what you did was right or wrong, and if the um, evaluation or the mark you get so is dynamic, so if a peer uh, can select a different uh, discipline, a different subject, and succeed there, so such uh, things are really important. So we are based on ideal, perfect patterns or models. But let's see how difficult uh, it is to rethink it on how we organize the learning process in our university, so, which is like a central neural system. So it's about uh, professors, teachers, organizing the labor models and uh, the workspace. And if we want to achieve goals here, we need to transform a lot of things, and it's always a challenge. Uh, to extend on what you asked us about, Rupin, on whether the evaluation system will change, we all understand perfectly well that depending on um, what the evaluation system is about uh, leads to changing our education system. And I'm talking um, about uh, the um, examination system. So, and you know, I used to be uh, the quality head of the quality assessment system. And for the uniform state exam, uh, we evaluate not just knowledge, but the ability to use them in real practice. And if we would evaluate uh, the ability to work in team in extraordinary conditions, I would uh, suggest that we will progress uh, in that direction, maybe not tomorrow, 
As for today, we are not ready for that change, for introducing that exam straight away. But uh, I would like to reveal a secret to you, even an oral examination uh, which allows to assess creative skills of a school person. Um, so, uh, we actually offered some developments for that. But we should be very careful here because the assessment system sets the trend, the vector for the entire system of education. I would agree. So, this is a really big topic, and uh, sadly, we are uh, limited in terms of time. But uh, it's interesting on how. A young person can change his views and positions, but let's move to our block two. So the essential thing is who, then when and how, and what's the cost for the state? Uh, so who is the most important for us, maybe a son or a grandson of a professor who attended uh, the lectures and realized the authority, mm, but who will teach us? How will we uh, attract uh, people into our education system who will convey and render the new type of knowledge? And education is a very conservative uh, is an area. It was very hard to change, to transform, and there are advantages about it. And so this is a precondition of uh, success when we are talking about some general fundamental knowledge. But uh, how do you see on whether the type of a professor of a teacher will change because we see a huge number of people who really um, came into this profession as it was their passion. So, like professors with a capital uh, P, um, will they change or do they have to change? Well, it might seem to be a paradox, but we should start actually not from school. And uh, Mr. Falkov spoke about the influence of the family and the proper upbringing. We sometimes undervalue that component. Uh, <laughs> well, finally, now the pandemic uh, forced people to realize how important this upbringing is. Uh, yes. So family upbringing is extremely important, then family, then education at school is extremely important. And even before school, preschool upbringing is extremely important. All the key psychological functions uh, are uh, being uh, uh, instilled right at the beginning in the first six to seven years. So according to our survey, the average year age of teachers is 45 years. So pretty young, I would say. So as part of the upgrade, together with Mr. Falkov, we've been changing our methodology, including in training. And uh, we actually saw a higher demand for uh, our uh, teaching institutions, uh, or teacher training institutions. So we plan to have 5,000 uh, classes where we, which we would monitor, and we would monitor every school child that could become a high-class teacher, because a lot depends on the teacher. And no system possible would ever replace a teacher. But what about requirements to the teachers, to a new generation of teachers? Where will it come? My wife is a member of the board of system of teacher, teaching for Armenia. And you have uh, people, not always uh, trained teachers, who go to teach at uh, rural schools. So these are students who uh, graduated from the Department of Geography or Math and never thought they would become a teacher. So 
Is that a, a possible experiment? Uh, who will be a teacher? What are the requirements for the next generation of teachers? The need to convey this idea that experiments uh, are the way forward. You shouldn't be afraid to, to uh, lose, uh, to fail. You know, trial and error method. Otherwise, you know, currently there is a just a to-do list, like a checklist that teachers need to comply with. Will we ever go beyond those checklists? Will we be able to have new teachers who will train a new generation of people? Or will it require like uh, dozens of years, decades? Well, changes are underway regardless of uh, whether we accept them or not. The role of teachers has changed, and the role of uh, teachers both at school and in universities has changed. They do no longer have the monopoly for knowledge. We know definitely that the role of a teacher can make a difference. There could be unique people, either at school or at university, that had a major diff made a major difference in our lives and shaped our destiny. So, Mr. Kraftsoff spoke about uh, teachers at school, but that definitely, we need to have a lot of changes there. Students go to those schools and universities where you have wonderful, brilliant, passionate teachers. So the future of universities is all about science and research. The more science and research you have, the more excited, interesting people you have, because scientists are people who defy orthodox teachings or define, defy orthodox behavior. They are ready to take a risk, and they teach their students to do the same, to follow suit. They hammer at home that you may, you may have some knowledge, but life is so dynamic, so fast-paced, that you need to be ready f to everything. So we need to have a mix, a good mix of practitioners and theory, uh, those who teach theory. You know, it's much better than a system where you have uh, some lecturers who only give you lectures of uh, a system that existed like, 20 years ago who never practiced what they preach. And this is what uh, puts young people off. This is why young people leave the towns and cities where they were born. And there's a major difference between schools and universities, actually. The school is predefined by your location, while students can choose their university on their own. Well, currently we have online education. Currently you can maybe even choose a school, your own school. You mentioned Armenia. This is an interesting experience, actually. We worked with our counterparts from Armenia, from the Ministry of Education of Armenia, and they apply a lot of innovative components. School education should not be a, uh, too close, too secluded. You need to invite successful businessmen, policy makers, economists, who would uh, teach by, who would lead by example, who would teach by example. It could be good role models to teach the students of what they need to do to achieve a certain outcome. Yes, it reminded me of a story. Um, Deputy Minister of Finland came to Russia and uh, his assistant talked to me and I asked him, how long have you been in this position? Well, three months. And what was your education? I asked him. He said, I applied for a teacher and uh, I wasn't accepted and I became a deputy for a deputy minister, deputy education minister. So, how can we actually boost uh, prestige for this profession? Teachers have never, ha have never been a high-paying job. It's been respected. 
Uh, you know, take a rural area. My um, grandpa was a principal of a school, and this was uh, perhaps the most respected one, like a police officer, a, a priest. Uh, and, uh, these were the most respected people. Well, we need to change our attitude to the industry itself. We previously, uh, we had uh, a situation where people um, thought that uh, scores were more important than real knowledge. If you look at the top 100 CEOs, the 80% don't have MBAs. They don't have MBAs uh, from Harvard, Wharton. So they either graduated from some university or they dropped out. They don't have a high education. So success in terms of your business success is not always defined by your uh, degree, by your certificate or diploma. You don't need to have a diploma cum laude to become a successful businessman. So what is success all about? You need to lead by example, and you need to have the best. You need to have the best to share their recipes. So what do we need to do to make sure that the private sector chips in? You represent government bodies. I represent the private sector. I am the moderator. So definitely it's a two-way street. What needs to do that our public changes its attitude to this industry? It's the most successful people who should come to to, this, to school or to university to become a teacher and share their recipe for success. Well, there is no silver bullet here. Uh, talking of teachers, we've seen huge change recently. And we can see that at universities, seven to eight years ago, university graduates were different than those would we see today. We can see that by the average uh, score of the standardized exams. We see those who won Olympiads. It means that teachers are now a successful profession. Definitely, you always have uh, some kind of people who would join this profession because it's all it's uh, the opportunity to uh, express yourself. Uh, there is a romantic aura about it. So the, go the government needs to show its uh, respect. Uh, also, a lot depends on the head of a university, on the principal of a school. It depends on the financial opportunities. Again, we can talk a lot about it. So it's a combination of, the, of these factors. It also depends on the social economic conditions. We understand that without professors, without scholars, without researchers, our economy won't be able to move forward in a dynamic pace. I totally agree with you. It's a comprehensive issue. Then let's move on to the final block of questions. What are the changes in terms of generational changes? And let's go to our, to exams. Do, previously, we had written exams, oral exams, standardized exams. We all know very well that some of our classmates were able to pass exams, but uh, it doesn't mean that they became the most successful person. So it's a skill, actually. Uh, so it, there's no link between passing exam with fine colors and uh, a lot of knowledge. And we had a project. Uh, we, have, we have teachers from 92 countries. And we don't have typical exams like uh, English or whatever. No, you do oral interview. So you do an essay, they look at it, then you have an inter interview, and then you do a test for uh, a day. It's just talking, chatting with you. And this system has been in, in place for 60 years. And more than 6,000 people used that system. There is no exam, actually. 90% of those who are enrolled, oh, they are those who wanted that on their own, those who wanted to change 
this world for the better. People from Japan, uh, France, say, I want to go to Armenia or to Switzerland to you know, have a better view of, of the life. So it's a di- completely different system. Enrollment rests on your passion, on your desire, not on knowledge. So we have a five-score system. Sometimes you have ten-score systems. Will this five-score system, will exams remain in the 21st century as something that certifies your success? Or will it have to change? Well, in terms of the education system, a score like in business, you have to have some kind of KPIs, you have to some have some kind of a form of control. Otherwise, it's really difficult to take decisions. There could be different exams. As we discussed today earlier, you might have a monitoring system performance monitoring system that needs to be evolved. You need to be really balanced. These metrics need to be objective, as I said multiple times. If it's not fair, it discourages students, it undermines the entire education system. Overall, we might see Global me- change in global metrics, a change in assignments, it depends on the goals we set for preschool or school education. Well, actually, we don't have any exams for a, a preschool students. Well, I know there is some kind of tough filter system, tough screening system for certain in certain schools. Well, maybe. I am aware of the experience that you referred to. We wanted to have an oral exam. We wanted to introduce an oral exam, kind of an interview, in addition to the standardized exams that we currently have to check the knowledge, to check whether a person has an ability to defend their knowledge, uh, their ideas, whether they can achieve what they are shooting for. These are important skills for the 21st century, skills of the future. We wanted to introduce that as part uh, of uh, the uh, reform uh, at uh, the uh, watchdog, educational watchdog, and I'm sure we will come up with such a system. We need really to do that in a careful, prudent way. We should avoid any drastic changes. Overall, the monitoring system should be in place, and it should should remain in place. We'll just have three minutes. Uh, we're really tight, and uh, I hope we'll have an opportunity to continue. So, before we finalized our session, I really appreciate you taking your time. Final question to you, Mr. Falkov. Hybrid generation, offline, online, is society where children teach their parents for the first time. It's never been in history. It's unprecedented. We are witnessing a new paradigm where children teach parents. So we used to write letters uh, with uh, pens, uh, and I even had... I I was even grew grew up in a system where we used feathers and ink to write letters. Currently, that's not a system no longer. The the reality is completely different from what we were born in, from what we used to. Well, first of all, I believe you were uh, later on too thick. We are you over exaggerate. We feel really great in digital. I don't really like. This uh, interpretation of the word hybrid. Okay, we can use transitional. Transition. Well, we received education in the analog world and uh, we feel fine about it. Maybe it's a bit. It's just about a different thing. It's. uh, As for the pandemic, once it's over. Offline education will be completely different at universities. Uh, Whether we want it or not, it will be a hard fact. 
I don't want to go deeper into it since we don't have too much time, but I'll hopefully talk about it later. Well, we have a new platform, like 12 topics of this platform. We discuss it uh, with our partners, with my wife. We believe that education is the cornerstone for the 21st century. So uh, I'm really happy that we had this conversation. I hope this is just the beginning. And we'll continue to talk at different platforms. We'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Thank you so much for taking time. So school, universities. But the most important thing is family. I didn't want to go into it. It's a dangerous area, I know. The family is important. And by 2030, uh, a lot of Europeans will be uh, alone. Well, I agree that family is the cornerstone of everything, is the foundation of everything, but that's uh, for the future. I agree that everything is important, so school and university is important, but without, with, without basic values, without your DNA, you, without your family, you wouldn't be able to achieve anything. Thank you once again. And once again, I would like to congratulate the Guida Forum on this uh, great occasion. Thank you.